One of the most important parts of an EV swap are the batteries and the battery boxes. Let's take a look at the design for Project Gigawatt. Episode 3 starts now. Okay, here's a tour of the battery boxes I will be building for Project Gigawatt. This is a Tesla Model S battery module. I'm going to fit 16 of these in the DeLorean, so I need four boxes that are all identical, each one containing four modules. And I'd like these boxes to be as small as possible, so I'm going to design them for the minimum dimensions that allow enough strength to contain the modules and support the modules and allow the boxes to be assembled because we do need some room for electrical connections and coolant connections. So keeping those requirements in mind, I've got them stacked up. Here's a group of four. I don't want them touching each other, so they will be stacked with an air gap. And in order to do that, we're gonna make shelves. So each one of these will be supported on a shelf using these rails on the battery module. If you look close at these rails, they're skewed on the battery module. So there's a bigger distance from this edge, which is the electrical side of the module, and a shorter dimension here on this side. So if I make symmetrical battery module rails, it will actually skew the modules to one side, which I can use to my advantage because I need a little bit more room for the coolant connections. So let's take a look at those battery shelves. So here's a closer look at these battery shelves. So the module is going to rest on the shelf and that will give it support just from the rails that are built into the module. That'll have an air gap below the bottom to keep it isolated from the battery box and each module will be isolated from each other. So this is made out of quarter inch aluminum and it's designed to have a recess cut into it so that you can just slot the battery module right into these grooves and that will lock it into place. It cannot shift forward or back and it cannot shift side to side because it'll be right up against the outer edges of the battery box. And then the next step, once you get the first one set into place, you install the next layer of shelves so that shelf will go in and this next shelf clamps the battery module down into place. You can see it's got these pre-drilled holes along the whole length of the shelves. Those will line up with the pre-drilled holes in the sides of the box. So the assembly of this is assembling this shelf into the side of the box. And then that gives you the support to continue to stack up the modules. So here's you can see the recess that's cut in. Once this module is installed, now you can install the shelves and stack the next module into place. So that will just stack in. And the dimensions allow for an air gap. This air gap, uh, I will have a mica sheet in between each one. And they, so they will not be chafing on each other. They will just be locked into place. These rails are symmetrical. so. Uh, the, it doesn't matter if you install it on the left side or the right side and because they're symmetrical and because that the shelves on the modules are skewed it gives me less room on the electrical side of the module which is fine because I need more room on the plumbing side of the module so it's kind of a nice feature just the way they were designed I can make symmetrical parts but still get the dimensions for my assembly Another consideration for these battery shelves is the weight. These are made out of quarter inch aluminum and it doesn't need to be solid quarter inch aluminum just to get these grooves that support the battery modules. So I wanted to window these parts. The other thing I want to save is money and so and material. I don't like waste. So if we can nest these parts together when cutting, we can get two for one. So this is what it will look like when we cut these parts out. I'm going to mirror image and skew them so they're nested together. So the pillar of one is the window of the other. And the way this is going to be cut, the plasma table will go and drill all of these holes. So it'll pierce all those holes so you have a starting point to uh, chase them with a drill. And then it will cut this zigzag line to create all of the pillars and windows. And that's a single cut line. So the kerf width of the material removed is calculated into these dimensions so they will be dimensionally accurate but still just have a single cut line so the only waste is the waste of the cut 
and then a tiny bit between the sets of shelves so I'll be able to stack them on the aluminum so it'll be very minimal waste of materials so that saves cost and it just makes it more efficient using as much material as possible. The sides of the battery box are going to have all of the holes for mounting the battery shelves pre-drilled so these will all be cut on the plasma table and then chased with a drill. It will also have these tabs and slots for a self-jigging design. So the assembly will start by installing the bottom battery shelf onto the side of the battery box. These will all be done with rivets and they will be countersunk rivets so I'll countersink the, this quarter inch aluminum on the battery shelf and then when I pull the rivet in it'll be a nice flush design there and that helps with that minimum dimension box so it's not protruding into the battery module. You can see that these tabs and slots line up here as well so the pillar is lined up with this slot. That gives me a little bit more material on the bottom of the box because the bottom will be riveted into the end of this battery shelf. Here's a look at that bottom plate for the box. It's got the alternating tab and slot design so it fits self-jigged into the side of the box so everything is in alignment. And it has double pre-drilled holes. I'll be able to chase those with a drill right up into the battery shelf. And then it makes this a very strong corner joint here between the jigging and the rivets uh, it really is a nice strong joint and so that'll happen on both sides and then it's time to start assembling the battery modules so that will just stack right into place and you can see it gives a nice clearance all the way around so there's no rubbing or chafing of the battery modules they're just suspended from the rails that are built into the module and from the top-down view here you can see that it's right up against the sides of the battery box. It's set down flush into those rails and then we can just stack them on up. So the assembly of the box just goes one layer at a time. So first with the bottom module, then you have to add the bus bar and that's going to tie the bottom module to the next module along with the next set of battery shelves and then you can stack the next module on and so on the module, the bus bar, and then the shelves, and then the module and the bus bar all the way up to the top. And then you have a nice surface all the way around. You can see that quarter inch material gives me a mount mounting surface for the front of the box as well as the top of the box, which will be jigged just like the sides to the bottom. So this electrical side of the battery box is the side that I just need minimum dimensions. And what I need to allow for is the thickness of the bus bars, which they are pretty flush to the battery modules. They have just a slight clearance. But then I also need room to make my 2 watt cable connections. So if I show the lugs where they're gonna land onto the modules, that will be one in and one out. So this box is 100 volts. They will, all the boxes will be identical and they will be wired in series with each other to get to the 400 volts maximum. So with those lugs into place, I'll cut the ends of the box to allow for those to come straight out. These will all be hardwired into place. So there's no uh, quick connects or disconnects in the box because that would take too much room to have the inside and outside provisions for that. So I'll just have a, it, it'll be hardwired with the cables and each one of these will have a cable gland to make it watertight at those connections. And then I have one additional cable gland that's for all of the battery management wires and the thermistor wires. So that completes the electrical side of the box. Okay, now we're on to the cooling side of the battery box. Each one of these battery modules has dual cooling loops so it has two inputs and two outputs and I need to feed them equally and return the flow equally so I need a manifold inside the battery box one side will be feed one side will be return and I'm going to make it out of one inch aluminum with these fittings spaced evenly throughout and then it'll have a pass-through so you can feed it externally and run them in parallel with all of the other battery boxes so it should look something like this. 
it'll be inside the box that's why I had to leave a little extra room to allow for the size of this manifold and this is just gonna have to be fabricated I need to put an elbow into it so I can pass the fittings through the end cap of the box and so once we get the end caps back on it'll just have these coolant pass-throughs and then we'll go ahead and add the fittings to them and just these T fittings because they'll all be equally fed so they'll just um, every single module every single loop in the modules all 32 of them will get an equal feed and an equal return of the coolant so here it is complete with the top assembled that top is also tab and slot design and pre-drilled for all the fasteners which will be most likely rivets they don't back out and there's no reason to access the box once it's installed everything is kind of a permanent build it can also be weatherproofed by sealing all of the perimeters and the overall dimensions of the box end up being 30 inches long 12 and 1 8 inch wide and 13 inches tall so this will be one of four hopefully the actual construction comes together like it's planned this box is now called the FS4 that's the flat stack 4 and if you can imagine this design can just be stacked even higher so you could do a FS6 or an FS8 uh, with each additional battery module you do add some weight but that might be the way to go for future builds we'll see how it goes with the design complete just have to make the tool paths and start cutting material so the tool path starts with the inner cuts all of the piercings to be chased with the drill bit and then the perimeter and I closely monitor the condition of the cuts changing consumables when needed and resting the machine so on this quarter inch material you can see that zigzag cut I would rest the machine and then cut each perimeter and there's a whole stack of them just minimal waste they're all positioned nice and close so I'm not wasting any of that thicker material. A little bit of cleanup and these are ready for assembly. I tried to make as many as possible at once that way I have a whole stack of them ready to go. First uh, starting with that bottom dimensioned rail attaching that to the side of the box and you can see how this worked out as planned with the tab and slot design locating everything with the holes and they really did rivet together uh, really nice that joint became much stronger than I anticipated which is really nice and uh, but it does have just enough flex that you might need sometimes installing the battery modules I've got all the bo battery box bases done all the rails cut it's just ready for modules so I thought I would do a test fit here you can see how those rivets countersink into that material to have minimum width and here's kind of the stacking of the modules once they're in there they're locked in they do not budge without fasteners in the rails they're just um, compression fit all the way throughout so it's going to assemble really nice but before i do that um, i do need to fit these boxes into the car so a lot of test fitting to figure out how the boxes should be mounted how i'm going to protect them so that will be next episode See you then.